Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today is going to be an updated energy report for the new moon and solar eclipse on July 13th, 2018. It's a very, uh, very transformative time. And change is never, rarely is change comfortable or even pleasant. Oftentimes it's the opposite. It's quite uncomfortable. It's quite unpleasant, even if it's a positive change, which in, the, which in our case it most certainly is. But the results of the change, they're always celebrated. So right now you might be in that uncomfortable, I'm changing now sort of phase, but just remember where the changes of the past have led you. They've led you to a greater place of inner peace, a more expansive mind, more perceptive, more intuitive, more of a consistent embodiment of that still peace, that potential inner peace within you. <sighs> That's the results. That's what you're changing into. Just want to put that on the table. Okay, because now we'll go ahead and get into the update. If you guys are new to my channel, then I'll explain how I do it. Normally, I will share five different key elements to more uh, precisely express the essence of these energies and how they may be affecting you and those around you and the collective as a whole. Okay? Number one, as I wrote down, living in alignment, living in accordance with your own true principles, your own truth, your own harmony may be difficult. You may feel the longing to more than ever because you're probably feeling the results of not living in alignment to a sharper, harsher degree. There are, there's more pain now associated with the contrast of you not living in your flow. And yet, ironically, and it can seem cruel, it might seem like life is stacking up and provoking you to live out of alignment. So it's like, what do I do here? I know the message is to get back into my flow, into my center, into balance, and yet I just can't seem to get a handle on it because there's like one thing after another spilling into my lap randomly, unexpectedly, and it can be kind of uh, discouraging and frustrating. But here's why that goes down. It's not the time, it's, it's the time to do your best, as I mentioned in my recent video, one of them anyway. It, but it's a time to take notes, to really see, okay, this isn't good, this isn't good, that, this, this, and the other, all not good. I can't help myself from doing it at this time. So I'm going to kind of take a mental note of that because the energies always shift. Night turns into day and, 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 and stormy waves settle into where you finally see that glass surface. And that's what's going to happen. The energies are going to settle. Night will turn to day. And all of that learning, all of those realizations of all those things you might have been unconsciously doing up until that point, it'll be way easier to not do them and you'll find yourself naturally falling into more of a groove, more of a rhythm, based on your own natural conclusions you drew from experiencing that temporary harsh contrast. So ride it out, do your best, take notes, and trust the process. Trust your life's unfoldment. You will return to a greater degree and depth of flow than ever before. Number two, playing off of what I just said, is results of growth spilling in. How many times have you had a rough cycle, a rocky time, to where you, your faith is just gone, your body a mess, your life all over the freaking place and you're like want to just pull your hair out of your head what do i do a lot of people get re in really dark places right now it, it, during these times rather it's like oh my god what am i gonna do 
and then, as I said, as you know, you've experienced this, the energies change, they shift. All that provocation to help you become a better version of yourself ceases because you've learned what you needed to learn and then the new you can spread its wings, open up, re-expand, and then the universe very, very quickly reciprocates with reflections, clean, clear, accurate, crisp reflections of that new you that is now shining brighter than ever. That sounds like a neat metaphor, but what I mean is your life can improve and whip itself back together very quickly. Once the dust settles, all of a sudden you're thinking clearly. Those inspired ideas that resonate with you of a, a chord of excitement return. And that one idea will lead to another and another, and that will lead to an unfoldment and a circumstance and a little bit of luck as you might perceive it. And all of a sudden it's like, huh? You're like on this ascent, you're on this like, this, 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 this you're riding this crest way up in the sky. It's like, oh my God, why would have I ever doubted myself? I, I, it's always happened. Yeah, remember that. That's the results of this change, this shift, this adjustment, this upgrade you're going through. You will see the results, I promise you. I don't have to tell you. You don't have to believe me. You know this. Re reflect upon your own journey and that's all the evidence you need. Number three is I put a CTA, call to action for light workers. You guys, yes, you're all light workers. Call to action for light workers. Even the beginning stages, a lot of people hear that and maybe they're, they're, they're sort of, they feel like they're new to the process and they say, well, Victor's on YouTube doing all this stuff. <gasps> I'm not ready for that. I don't mean that. There, there are just steps. There are levels. There are, and it's all valid. It's all important. But you just might feel, I would say, maybe a growing sense of uh, obligation and also enthusiasm to find a way to help, to contribute to the general theme of upliftment and empowerment for the whole. If you do feel this, you might also feel parallel to that, a growing uh, disgust, I would say, for the nature of humankind. You might be doing a lot of uh, discovering of the gross injustices taking place on the planet. And you don't know where, you don't know where, to, where do you go from here? At some, at, on some level, on some days, in some moments, you might feel just like, like, ah, what's the point? It's, we're screwed. Other times you might wake up at night and you feel that force. You have two streams of momentum that you can choose to feed. You can choose to feed the resistance, the discouragement, the hopelessness, and then you will attract more and more of that negativity, more and more of the bad news into your life, and it can weigh you down like a wet blanket. Or you can feed and fuel that passion within you. And again, it depends on where you catch yourself on any given day, but the more you feed that passion to help, and to serve and to help and to, and to heal rather. The more you will be supported by the cosmos, the universe, your spirit guides, your higher self, all these non-physical forces are like waiting for people to start stepping into their role. Once you do, it's like a gust of wind will sort of lift you up. You'll be, you'll be blasted with your own doubts and resistance, no doubt, it happens, but you can feed and feed and fuel and fuel that flame of passion to help. And if you feel that call to action, now is a very important and, and powerful time to do that. It might involve jobs changing. It might involve shifting your life around to, to live out this role, this, this character you came to play and this role you came, this path you came to walk. But you can trust above all else your passion that will never, ever, ever lead you into anything but a better life. A life of satisfaction and wholeness and fulfillment and service and contribution, big or small. Number four, oftentimes as we move forward quickly, especially into the role I shared, it, we can ex 
what gets exposed are very, very deep, dark, old, firmly established roots, core. No, just kidding. I keep going on with that. Big early childhood stuff might start to kind of make itself known. Not enough to heal sometimes. It's like, oh my goodness. Ooh, I can see how that's affecting me, blocking me. I'm sabotaging myself. It's influencing me, causing me to act out and play out these cycles I no longer wish to experience, but it's, I don't want to look at it. I don't know how to heal it. It's just there. It goes like that. It's like, a, it's like a, I'm trying to think of an example. It's like the sun rising. At first, you just barely peeking over the horizon. It's slightly lighter than when it was maybe a few hours ago. So it's kind of like that. The sun is starting to rise on some of the deep, dark issues within you, but not enough light to see clearly. Oh, I'll go in there and I'll do this and I'll shift this and I'll drop this belief, etc. Sometimes it's not enough light, but that's okay because what happens? The sun just continues to rise and rise and rise and rise. And before you know it, it's high noon and you're just blinded almost by the light and the clarity allowing you to easily purge and remove whatever is coming up for you. Oftentimes with uh, like unworthiness and just that kind of stuff, real early childhood stuff does have a huge influence on us and most of us as children, you know, uh, really didn't know any better but to compartmentalize it in a, 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 a little cavern within us, um, but it's there. And, and it's affecting us. And if it's coming up for you, that's good. It's like the beginning of a massive, oh, a massive release, a massive stepping up in your degree of personal freedom. Sometimes our heart wants to do stuff, but we have the, this weight just weighing us down. And it's not about like, what do I do? Or, or like, how, how do I do it? It's just about how do I get rid of this weight so I can just go freely forward. And this, uh, uh, this eclipse energy is sort of starting a cycle of a massive, a very epic degree of personal release, leading to a higher level of personal freedom that I think any of us have experienced to this point. Number five is the new divide. It's funny, most of these points I share about, they're, they're like in the like intuitive thoughts I have, basically. This new divide has been more of like a synchronicity. I keep seeing it. I keep hearing the Linkin Park song, The New Divide. And I just sort of had a knowing to share about it. But even driving up here, I was like, what am I going to talk about? What, what, what? I don't really, I felt guided to share about it, but I didn't know what to say. But now I do. So I'll share it. You could look at what's happening like, this is not my analogy, I'll, I'll admit. It's this guy named Bashar. But there's like two trains leaving the station right now. And the tracks are getting further and further and further and further apart. One train is a momentum of positivity, of growth and transformation. That's the train you guys are on. The other one is either just staying there and we're separating or it's actually, uh, some would suspect, going even further into like the egoic, darker, nighttime sort of state of consciousness. And, and right now there's a they're like sort of in the same reality where there's like this positive stream and this negative stream and they're kind of coexisting but there's a new divide, a, a new level, a new discernible degree of separation taking place right now where jumping tracks is going to become increasingly more difficult. So that's why I kind of had that call to action for light workers because many of them, they look at the other train with disgust and they say, you know what, that train sucks. Those people are mean and cruel and they might be. But it's, it's the job, the role of the light worker to, to as they say in a ayahuasca ceremonies, to hold space. A space of presence, maturity, love, and compassion really mean, negative, nasty, hateful people simply were not taught another way. They don't have the same degree of consciousness as you. And therefore, I would say it can be helpful to look at them more like a child without being too insulting. An example, yesterday I was driving home and my two-year-old chucked his bottle right at the back of my head. 
And it did, it pissed me off. I'm not gonna say I don't get mad at what I see or angry or feel like frustration. I was frustrated, no doubt. I got all wet and everything, like split open. And I got all wet, hit me in the head, it shocked me. I was already kind of like ticked off. <sighs> but he doesn't know any better, he's two years old. He doesn't really, he's, he's a little kid. So I'm not gonna truly resent him or hold a grudge or judge him. I will love him, even if he throws more bottles at my head. And this can be done in very simple ways that you might not realize the power of a little good deed. Now, give an example. One of my clients, Wendy, she was in a face, a heated Facebook war with some dude. And this guy was being nasty and critical and just mean, just like real mean and nasty with his words, real, real sharp with his tongue. And she just tried to hold her composure and basically was like, listen, I'm going to tune out, buddy. But uh, I just really wish she would have been nicer in our engagement. Something like that. Something real simple and sensible. She didn't lash out at him, even though she probably felt like it. And then like an hour later, she comes back and did a little investigation. And she could find this particular character was having all sorts of mean wars and blowouts with many other people on Facebook. But after she said that, after she just said that nice little honest, hey, would you be nicer, please, dude? He changed his tone with everybody he was interacting with. A good deed, a little decency and kindness is the best thing anyone can do for, for mean, nasty people. If I was to yell and spank my little two-year-old, he would just be pissed. He would just make him want to throw more bottles at me. But I could say, you know what, he threw that bottle at me because he was in a place of frustration. He didn't get his nap. He was tired. He was cranky. We just got back from the park. So a little love and nurturing is what he really needed, even though I was initially caught off guard. So that sort of attitude, I think, can be very powerful and advantageous at this time when the trains are starting to leave the station. You can call more people over to the good train, the fun train, the expansive train, by holding your space, by being cool with mean people. And that is all, my friends. That is what I have to share about this message. Um, I hope you're all doing fantastic. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I'll let you know. If you don't know, I have a free guided meditation that I made myself. It's designed to help people come into their own remembrance of their ability to heal themselves with the power of their intention and focus. As many of my personal clients know, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of guided meditation because I prefer them to, to know how to put themselves in that state. So it's almost a contradiction that I have a guided meditation. But the tone of it is to help you realize that you are the one it requires your participation. You're the one doing the work and you will get the effect and you can think not my meditation, but yourself. It's free. Check it out down below if you'd like. There's a link. And with that, I'm going to close. I want to say thank you for all the love and support. I've been getting a lot of really nice gestures from people as of lately. People wanting to paint me and send me stuff and just all this, this beautiful love you guys send me. Um, so thank you so much. It's not always easy to do what I do. I wake up in a bad mood and have bad days, um, but it's like this sense of uh, there's this big thing that requires both of us, a give and take that always fuels me to come and shoot videos even when I don't want to. So thank you for that. If you believe in my message, then you are helping me share it. Peace out, my friends. We'll be in touch soon. Namaste.